All right, greetings everyone. And I am slightly off camera because I am not used to this setup yet. But uh, welcome to another video. Today we're going to do a quick rundown on global related stuff and whether or not think that it is worth it. And uh, that being said, today we are talking about the Dark Shiva card and a surprise global, uh, a new global card, which is interesting as well. So yes, all of this is we're just going to be talking about today. I think this video is going to be relatively short. He said yakking on a little bit more. So uh, let's get right into it because Final Fantasy VIII is probably about a month and maybe a week away from global if the speed up is going to happen, which we have no reason not to believe it is. The resources are going to be thin for globalers, and this is one that I feel is totally fine skipping. And, you know, not necessarily this week, but maybe there's a hint in this video to what I think about Bride of Laia as well. But anyway, this is probably a vision card that you can get off of a select banner later. You know, the fourth anniversary is coming up by that time. This will be on any kind of paid vizior, spend, you know, 2k and get one thing of your choosing. This is that perfect kind of thing, if you really are in. And talking about this VC, this VC is essentially, to me, like a luxury almost. Like, speed cards are not particularly that rare anymore. And if you're looking at this, this is kind of more just... Well, it is essentially the magic card up. I can prove it because... Uh, if it wasn't behind the image, I have the VC stats right here. And I don't expect the VC stats to change. I mean, you can see that it's got, you know, defense, magic... Dexterity, luck, and for the party effects, we're looking at this. And the unit effects, we're looking at this. And as for the Esper herself, I mean, sure, let's just pop over to that really quickly. Take a look right there. You can see that she's a 19 agility Esper, which for a ma magic type Esper is probably tempting to some people. You can see that she's basically ice attack and pierce, which is, you know... I think there's a specific character out there that would really like it. But overall, uh, this is a VC that I just don't think is mandatory for basically any reason. It's not because it's bad, it's just it's an incredibly high cost with no pity on it. Uh, it is, you know, basically the pure 40k in when global is just so careful with resources. Okay. So yeah, Dark Shiva, I feel, is a 100% skip because I feel like it's just going to be on a select a banner or potentially easier to get on a reroll banner or some kind of worldwide or fourth anniversary celebration. This, I, I mean, there are going to be people, people out there who say, but is she bad? And I said, no. It's just that 90 costs are a lot of luxury and probably for whales only. So just skip it for now and be a dolphin and potentially save some money and go buy Baldur's Gate 3 or Armored Core 6, which I'll also be playing later. But this is the surprise one that I wasn't expecting and I don't think a lot of global are expecting. And Elena is slightly popular uh, still. So first off, shoutouts to the artwork. Um... Is he looking at it? Eugen? First, what the hell is going on in this vision? All right, so Lucio, aside from whatever the fuck he's doing in this picture, uh, let's take a look at this thing. So it is a sword, red mage, dagger, gun, gloves, a equipable main job, evasion up, critical evasion rate up, and slash attack up. While bestowed effect is agility with Starlit Elena and Lucio getting light attack. Now, obviously, this card is straight up a Starlit Elena card, and there's really not much point continuing that conversation because it's just face up. There's really nothing else to talk about in that sense. It's just, all right, you want a booster for Starlit Elena? Sure, this is definitely a booster for that. Will there be a potentially upgraded view, view, uh, yeah, version of Elena in the future? Possibly, and that might be why this is just a bad investment right now 
But it, I actually want to talk for a second because I think it's kind of interesting from a water and ice perspective. Um, if you were building an evasion, right? Like, this VC has a combination of jobs that I absolutely love. It is swords, it is daggers, it is guns, it is clubs. Like, oh, let me think about this. Oh, most of the water characters recently who get put into the red mage class. Oh, daggers, you know, you got... Um, actually, interestingly enough, as some people have noted and we'll talk about later, Irving plus... Uh, Irving plus uh, Joker, potentially plus Renoa, might be a really cool combination. Because it actually matches, and maybe there isn't a weird evasion team in there somewhere. We just don't know yet. But the slash attack up on the max unlock is really limiting to the type of characters that are overly going to benefit from this, because an evasion type gunner just not really overly a thing maybe that's a good thing but it'll be interesting to see the full stats on this because this bc is kind of cool and just taking a look at the details really quickly i don't see it as being limited so uh this is actually one of those global things that i want over on jp and given that you know another story three is coming out sure absolutely i kind of want to see this bc on JP. And that's where I'm ending the discussion for this video. So let me know what you think of this beat in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, this week, lots of stuff to look forward to from Final Fantasy VIII collaboration on JP2. And also, I should say, Armored Core 6. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. See you next time.